This part of the course reviews the signs and symptoms of temporal manipulator disorders. So signs and symptoms are how you recognize the disorder and identify it, and therefore what we call diagnose it. If you're hunting, you do not want to accidentally shoot a human. So you have to really be able, you have to really be able to recognize a deer, what a deer looks like, the color of the deer, how it, the deer postures. So when you're looking through your gun scope, you know it's a deer and not a human being. It's an incorrect diagnosis when you shoot the human being. This uh, man, Goth, he really was one of the most amazing people in the world. And um, I keep on running into things that he had said and wrote. And uh, he has a maxim, which is a, a strong saying. One sees only what one knows. So in other words, an ear, nose, and throat doctor is trained to see ear, nose, and throat problems and not TMD problems. So a lot of times, TMD problems just go undiagnosed. So if we recognize the signs and symptoms of TMD, we will be able to recognize it because we, be, we begin to know the signs and symptoms. But it also says a great deal about the medical and very often dental uh, professions because they don't know the signs and symptoms of TMD. So therefore, many, many, many patients go undiagnosed. And it's very common to see uh, patients having seen 10, 11, 12 medical and dental practitioners. So Yogi Berra was one of the most interesting guys. He played baseball for the uh, New York Yankees. And of course, you know, I hated the Yankees because I grew up in Boston and we were the Red Sox. And the, Re the Yankees stole Babe Ruth from the Red Sox. So we hate the Yankees. Um, but he said, so he had all these sayings. And if you don't know where you are going, you'll end up somewhere, someplace else. And I love this statement because you have to have in life some direction, right? As to where you are going, what you want to achieve. And also, if you don't know the signs and symptoms of TMD, you're gonna end up, you're gonna be doing a lot of things that you shouldn't have done. We have had patients had their, um, inner, uh, their middle ears mutilated. In other words, they went in to take, to cut the tensor tympani, um, which is the muscle that uh, controls the eardrum, when in fact it was due to a TMD spasm, a muscle in the, uh, in the mouth. So if you don't know where you are going, you're going to end up somewhere else. So you better get some direction about what you're doing. I really like this poster. I really do. I mean, it basically, it, it doesn't give you everything about TMD, but man, it is wonderful. And um, we present this uh, poster to every single CNT, in other words, uh, temporal manipulative disorder consultation patient. It is presented to the patient by a trained assistant a TMD assistant before the consultation. So I don't even come in until the uh, patient is prepared to uh, uh, look at this and go through all the signs and symptoms, or not all the signs and symptoms, but many of them. And a lot of patients, they just start crying because they have a lot of these problems and no one's ever talked to them about it, right? And so, this is broken up into different sections, head pain, headache, eyes, mouth, teeth, throat, neck, jaw, and ear problems, all right? There's like, what, uh, uh, eight different topics and sections. And uh, we're going to go over these sections uh, so that you, one, can understand the signs and symptoms, primary signs and symptoms, and two, you can present this to the patient so the patient will understand that he or she, usually a she, 
does have a temporal manipulative disorder and will reach to get treatment because they understand, gee, I have like all of that stuff, right? So they believe that they have TMD. And this is, sounds crazy, but many patients uh, that we actually wish to treat don't believe that you're, you're telling the truth to them and they don't buy what you're saying. So one of the things we like to do a, is to educate the heck out of them because I, I believe that an educated patient will reach for care. Uh, that's number one, because they want to get healthy. They want to get rid of their signs and symptoms. And uh, it, it's just a very, very important thing to educate the patient. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. So this uh, chart or diagram comes from the work of three dentists. Uh, two of them are dead. Dr. Bruce Kinney and Dr. Lawrence Font uh, have, are, are now uh, dead. But Dr. Uh, Brendan Stack, one of my mentors, um, he is still alive, although he's retired. And uh, I was fortunate. I'm writing an extensive book, really detailed extensive book, uh, on the etiologies and causes and treatments and everything. And um, Dr. Stack honored me by asking if he could be the editor. <laughs> and uh, I am still in the process of writing that book and probably going to be five to 10 years <laughs> writing it because it, it is so extensive. And Dr. Stack is getting older right now. And pretty much as I understand it is a little bit of an invalid. So here's the original uh, diagram that the uh, Kinney Font Stack Index uh, presented to patients. It would be a handout to patients. They would hand this to patients, and they uh, you'll see the next page, and they'd look at the signs and symptoms, like we, we're teaching our patients the signs and symptoms, right? And uh, from that diagram, but they would hand this to patients. They'd read the visual symptoms. It's visual because they're seeing the diagram. Uh, and they uh, would educate themselves. And then the second page, as you'll see, there's a questionnaire. So here's the second page. And it goes over lots and lots of questions. And they say yes or no. And then they step back and they see, uh, gee, I got whole bunches and bunches of yeses. I must have a temporal manipular disorder. And the name temporal manipular disorder has to, comes from uh, the fact that it's not a syndrome. And a syndrome, every patient has the same set of signs and symptoms, like a Downs kid. You look at any Downs kid anywhere in the world, and you can diagnose it just almost just by looking at the kid. Uh, disorders are weird. They present differently. Like It's like I, I say, like a Piccadilly cafeteria. You go into Piccadilly and you you pick the different things you want in your tray, uh, and then you. But everybody in Piccadilly has a different tray, but it comes from the same set of things on you know where you, you where you pick up your food. Uh, so disorders are uh, different in presentation of the same signs and symptoms, though. And this is, gets really complicated, and that's why so many dentists who are not used to medical diagnosis and physicians who don't think complicated very often and they're not trained in this area miss the diagnosis. But on the top here, it says TMJ dysfunction, which is an older term. So we're going to get started uh, with this diagram and basically review each one of the sections, each one of the signs and symptoms, and go over the etiology, what causes them, as well as we know, uh, so that you can learn to recognize. If you're a TMD assistant, this is real important to you because you are going to be presenting this information to the patient and answering questions. Please, please always restrict your answers to professional level, science-based answers. And, the, and in other words, learn the stuff I'm talking about here, and that's what your response is. Don't give weird, witchy, weird stuff to patients. Always stay professional, science-based, and 
um, only comment on things that you know because you know you're going to mislead the patient they'll lose trust in you also so you're going to be learning these signs and symptoms uh, as we go now so headache head pain is one of the number one reason for visits to physician offices mds headache is all throughout our society it's it's there everywhere and it is one of the main complaints that patients have when they come to our office um, it is one of the primary signs and symptoms actually symptoms because a symptom is something that the patient uh, sees and complains of. A sign is something that you can see, like the sign, a stop sign. I can see it, but it's not saying anything, but I can see it and I know what it means without uh, any, any words being made. So a, these are symptoms uh, and some signs, got it? So forehead pain on the top front of the face, above the eyes is the forehead. And you get forehead pain from the sternal, sternocleidomastoid muscle pain referral. And the sternocleidomastoid muscle, you're going to have to do little studies. It's a muscle that goes down the side from the back of the neck down to the front of the chest. The sternum is your, you know, your, your breastbone up and down. And uh, forehead pain uh, will sometimes come from the sternal division of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Now, this is what is really crazy is the, the clavicles are your collarbones. And there's a, the, this muscle, the sternocleidomastoid, attaches to the collarbones. And it goes up to the back of the neck. And what is really weird about this is patients will have pain on both sides of their forehead coming from, like, the right side. Or they'll have pain on both sides of their forehead coming from the left sternocleidomastoid. We don't see that anywhere else, right? We just don't. The temporalis muscle is a fan-shaped muscle on the side of the, he the head. And temp temporal muscle, anterior temporal, right above like your, your, your temples, uh, this is a common pain area. And very often is misdiagnosed. It's a muscle, right? It's not an artery or a blood vessel. So it's not temporalis muscle pain can be confused and misdiagnosed as migraine. The masseter of the beaver muscle on the side of the face, that masseter muscle uh, is the chewing muscle, one of the main powerful chewing muscles. And there's two, two parts of it, an outer and an inner. And the outer part can cause forehead pain. Like these are all things that cause forehead pain, right? And get this, the semi-spinalis, semi means half of the spine, spinalis, half of the spine, capitus, head, muscle can cause forehead pain too. The zygomaticus major muscle, this is a muscle that is, you know, goes from your cheekbones down to your upper lip. And this is kind of really interesting. And the occipital frontalis, which is the big giant muscle that goes from the back of your head to your forehead. This can have pain itself. It has myalgia. Myo means muscle, alga means pain. Occipital frontalis muscle myalgia means that muscle is working so much that it is now painful. And you've got pain in the front and back of the head, but that muscle can be painful. And then you have referral of pain. But in other words, one thing is the muscle's injured and it projects pain somewhere else. So you're feeling the pain somewhere else, not where the damaged muscle is. That's pain referral. Got it? So these are all reasons for forehead pain, but there are other reasons too. And that there is a sinus uh, in the middle of your head, between your eyes, between your eyebrows, called the frontal sinus, and it can get inflamed itis, like appendicitis, inflammation of the appendix. So frontal sinusitis will cause forehead pain. There's also uh, little small sinuses deep up on the top of the nose deeper inside called the ethmoid uh, air cells and the ethmoid you can get and it's a sinus too so ethmoid sinusitis those sinuses can be 
In fact, they didn't have to be painful. And then, of course, migraine will cause temple pain or forehead pain. Uh, and migraine, we can talk to never end about migraine because I believe strongly that migraine and, and TMD are integrated and on like a spectrum. They interact with each other and they come from the same source, the same nerve too. So you can see the sternum on the left, the lady has her head up and you'll see like two muscles uh, under the ear, they split. One goes to the center collarbone. I mean, one goes to the center sternum and one goes to the uh, uh, clavicle, the collarbone. See them split? So the left one is the one that goes to the sternum, right? The right diagram goes to the clavicle. And these little black dots are what we call trigger points. So that muscle on the left, the one that, that just that half go, that goes to the chest will cause chest pain. Get this, underneath the throat and the back, swallowing problems. There's little pain in the chin. And look at that uh, picture above the right eye. There's like a circle going around, right around the right eye and then just above the temporal manipular joint. This is a lot of area of pain. And then the, 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 the vertex at the very top of the head, there is pain and right behind the ear. I recently had a patient come back from the physical therapist who did a piss poor job of taking care of those neck muscles and she had pain behind her ear. You can see that pain, the red ear behind the ear, uh, and she couldn't, you know, and also above above the uh, right eye. She had all of this, and the physical therapist failed to relax that muscle properly by getting all of the uh, vertebra and muscles in the neck calmed down. Just was a piss poor job. Now, look at this on the right-hand side. On the right-hand side, there's two dots above the, uh, the, the forehead. Those two dots are pain from the right muscle. See, we're just looking at the right sternocleidomastoid. But I want to point out something very important. Do you see that right ear? There's red in the ear. So this muscle, the sternocleidomastoid, which is involved in TMD extensively, will cause ear pain. And therefore, uh, and we call this occult ear pain, like occult means, um, you know, witches and things. Uh, you don't know what it is. Uh, occult ear pain and pain behind the ear. And they'll go where first? They'll go to the regular physician who send them to the ENT. And the ENT will look in the ear and say, you look great, there's nothing wrong. Let's do a hearing test. Let's run a bunch of tests, you know. Um, geez Louise, and they'll get crazy in evaluating uh, this patient because, again, remember Goff's uh, statement that you see only what you know. So he's going to test them for everything he knows. <laughs> and they're going to run up like a $10,000, $15,000 bill with the ENT and never get treated properly uh, because of this TMD-related muscle, the sternocleidomastoid. So the right side is the clavicular division because it goes to the clavicles and uh, it causes ear pain and pain behind the ear. Now, previously, uh, we talked about the forehead, which is above the eyes. Now we're turning our attention to the temples, which are slightly behind the eyes uh, on the side of the head. And there is a muscle, the, the temporalis muscle. And again, take some time, go and look at these muscles uh, so that you can recognize the muscles. And it'll just mean so much more to you if you know the anatomy of the muscles and where they're located and how, what they do. Because uh, you'll be able to recognize these signs and symptoms. So the anterior temporalis muscle myalgia, the muscle itself is overworked and is hurting. The muscle hurts, and it is the muscle pain where the muscle is that hurts. Got it? But the uh, anterior, temp the, the temporalis muscle has trigger points. These are little painful little knots, that, and they throw pain all over the place. They project pain to different areas. We saw that last diagram. And uh, 
pain in the temples can be caused by the temporalis muscle pain referral. Uh, it also, get this, the traps are in your back. It's a big diamond muscle. It's a trapezoid, if you remember your, um, your geometry. And uh, it's a trapezoid muscle. This back muscle can cause temple pain. No kidding, right? The big back muscle that pulls the head back, this muscle, and it raises the arms, this muscle will cause temple pain. The trapezius muscle will cause temple pain. Crazy. And that sternal division of the sternocleidomastoid, right? Uh, that was the outer one that goes to the, to the uh, sternum. That will cause also temple pain. The splenius cervicus, which is a muscle in the neck, not touching the head, this will cause pain in the temples also. And the upper semispinalis capitis muscle, which is both of these will project pain to the temple. Crazy, huh? And all the little muscles underneath the back of your neck, right, right below your head, they can also uh, um, cause problems with pain referral. Now you can also get real vascular pain inside the brain. Migraine is inside the brain, arteries, blood vessels, and TMD is outside the brain, muscles. The muscles coat the outside of the skull. The muscles move different bones, right? And make facial expressions. And But migraine is vascular, a blood vessel. It beats, being, right? The heart beats. And then there is a uh, giant cell arteritis. Giant cells are like killer tanks that go in and wipe out um, uh, infections. And sometimes these giant cells go wild and they cause an artery to get inflamed and it can block that artery off and cause blindness. So certainly a dentist who sees pain in the temples must be able to recognize giant cell arthritis because if you don't, the patient can go blind. And so if you misdiagnose it, it's a major event, a, a big problem. But these are the things that cause pain in the uh, temple. The anterior temporalis muscle myalgia, the pain of the muscle itself, the temporalis muscle pain referral, it's projecting. Trapezius muscle in the back, interesting. Sterno, sternal division of the sternocleidomastoid, splenius cervicus muscle referral, upper semispinalis capitis muscle referral, and the suboccipital muscle group referral, but also migraine and giant cell arthritis, which are entities of them. They're not TMD, so supposedly. Migraine may be, but definitely not giant cell arthritis. That's an infect, uh, not an infection, but it is a, a cells gone wild. So some of the things that cause headache, um, uh, and it's migraine type headache. So it's like a migraine. It is not a migraine. It's like a migraine. Okay. So when the anterior temporalis muscle overworks and gets painful, it's on the side of the head, exactly the same area as the uh, artery underneath it. Got it? And um, the trapezius muscle pain referral can also cause migraine type headache. So the neck can cause a migraine type headache. And the patient believes they have migraine and they go get uh, over the counter medicines and it gets better, but migraine doesn't get better from over the counter medicines. Migraine is a pretty bad thing. The sternal division of the sternocleidomastoid uh, can also refer pain to the anterior cause it, to the uh, temple area on the side of the head, which makes it look like uh, like migraine, but not it is not migraine. The upper semispinalis muscle that goes in the back, uh, capitis means the head, caput is the head. Uh, so the upper semispinalis capitis, these are muscles in the back of the neck that go up to the uh, bone on the back of the head. This can cause migraine type pain. So, and migraine can cause migraine type pain. And then again, giant cell arthritis can cause migraine pain. And these are 
um, things that different things that can cause migraine type pain. If you don't touch a patient, lay hands upon that patient, you are going to misdiagnose. So if a person comes in with this type of, let's say, anterior temporalis muscle myalgia, myo means muscle, algae means pain, muscle pain. So you lift things too much, you work real hard in a garden and lifting things during a move, you hurt the next day, that is myalgia, your muscles hurt. It, it's, right, it doesn't come from an artery. And you go to the doc and the doc doesn't touch you to press on the muscles, let alone know what muscles are there. He's gonna say, you got pain on the side of your head, you have migraine and actually write medications for the migraine without ever touching you because muscles contract. You can actually put your hand on the muscle, have the person bite or feel the contraction, get the hardness, press on it. Oh, that hurts. Oh, that's clearly myalgia or muscle pain. Again, I do want to quickly say, look on the bottom, myofascial pain and dysfunction, the trigger point manual. And that was written by David Simmons and Janet Travell and uh, Lois Simmons, uh, David's wife. They're, they're all dead to my understanding now. But I knew Dr. Travell. She was introduced to me by uh, Dr. Joseph Councilman. And um, I had that pleasure. And I, of course, I studied her book extensively and I've learned a great deal. Well, the next thing is sinus type pain, not sinus pain, but like sinus type pain. Um, sinus type pain, you can accidentally think it's sinus when it's not, right? So the beaver muscle sticks onto or attaches to the cheeks. Think about this. So the muscle attaches to the cheeks and then it runs down and it goes to the lower jaw. When it contracts, it pulls the jaw up. But it, it sticks to, is nailed to the cheeks. What's below the cheeks? The sinuses, the maxillary sinuses. So when people have muscle pain, myalgia, from this at where the muscle or originates, many physicians are going to call that sinus. And a lot of patients are going to think it's sinus and get sinus uh, type uh, medications. But the lateral pterygoid muscle, this is a dental muscle which pulls the jaw forward. If that hurts, it can make referral into the sinus and make uh, uh, problems there also. So th these are two muscles that can cause sinus pain. Masseter, lateral pterygoid, both masticatory or chewing muscles. The sternocleidomastoid, there it is again. Spillover pain is not where the most intense pain comes from, but some pain. Spillover is some pain. So in other words, sternocleidomastoid has all its heavy red, dark red areas, but there's also um, some areas that are dotted. And the dotted areas are called spillover areas. These are areas that you can experience pain, maybe not as intense as the dark red areas. Got it? And the zygomaticus major muscle is, uh, goes over the front part of the uh, sinus and goes down to your upper lip. And if it is in spasm and has myalgia, you can have this type of pain, sinus type pain, but it's not sinus. So if a physician doesn't touch the face and contract the muscles, he will not know that it's muscle. He'll think, oh, it's right there where the sinus is. It must be sinus. Oh, we're hunting today. Deers are in the forest. What we shoot at must be a deer. No, it's a human. You just killed somebody. I'm just saying that this is what we see. We actually do see this. So there are two sinuses that the upper back teeth go into and the bone that holds all the upper back teeth, or actually all the upper teeth is called the maxilla and maxillary sinusitis. Those sinuses can get inflamed, itis, and that can cause real sinus pain. And then migraine can mimic or falsely present as, um, as uh, sinus type pain. What is really interesting is uh, many patients will self-diagnose. They'll never go to the MD and they'll have pain on the side of their head and they'll say, I have migraine. 
and they go to CVS or they go to Eckerd or they go to any of the other pharmacies and uh, they go after this box that says Excedrin Migraine and uh, it has all caffeine, aspirin, and acetaminophen. And they take this, they get better. Uh, oh my Lord. Um, and they say, I have migraine because this made my pain better, but this can actually help muscles. And so when a patient tells you, oh yeah, I have migraine, I take Excedrin migraine, so I have migraine, and it is not true. They, uh, uh, they self-diagnose and they take this, migraine is really, really painful. I mean, when you have a migraine headache, you got to go into the bedroom, turn the lights out, get everything dark, crawl up into a fetal position like a baby, and maybe cry and try to get to sleep because sleep is the only thing that will get rid of things. You can't function. You can't go to work. It's hard stuff. Um, so if it's like aggravating and et cetera, migraine helps it, it's not migraine. The neck is almost always involved in TMD problems. A, a lot of practitioners, dentists don't believe this, but man, that's all I see kids though. I see it all the time. And particularly in young people, we'll treat uh, the TMD with an appliance and the neck will get better. They'll be able to move the neck and there'll be no more neck pain. And we never treated the neck. It just got better from the TMD appliance. You know, th this confirms our knowledge. This makes us true believers because we see it every single day. There are many, many different papers that uh, show that um, neck, the neck is related to the uh, TMD. But shooting pain up the back of the neck, well, wait a minute, that's the neck. That's not the temporal manipular joint, is it? But they are related. So pain shooting up the back of the neck that can come from trapezius muscle pain referral or the trapezius muscle pain itself, right? Uh, uh, this is my algia. You can see splenus capitis shooting pain all the way to the vertex, which is the vertex is the very top tip top of the head, right? Uh, then the multifundi muscles, they can cause pain referral up the neck, the back of the neck. This is the back of the neck. And then you can actually trap or pinch off two very large nerves in the back of the neck, right? The, the back of the neck is called the occipital area. There's a bone called the occipital bone in the back of the head. The greater occipital nerve entrapment, pinching it, and the lesser occipital nerve entrapment, meaning they're getting pinched by the bones because of the muscles compressing. These are uh, really, really interesting uh, uh, things. Pa patients can come in with these complaints they go to physician's offices and there's neck pain and the doctor says, oh, it's neck pain. No, it's TMD caused. The TMD, the temporal manipulative joint posturing is causing the neck problem because the neck is trying to compensate by holding the head in weird positions. And all these back neck muscles will get pissed off and cause pain shooting up the back of the neck because they're trying to protect the temporal mandibular joint. Everything all works together. So we'll take a quick break. Uh, and so that uh, you can look at some of the muscles, right? So on the far left is the splenus capitis. See that um, to the far left? So it is flat and it goes to the lateral port behind the ear. Isn't that something? Pain behind the ear is a common uh, complaint and that muscle attaches to the spine and goes up to the right side or left side lateral part of the head. The multifundi, um, those are right around the back of each vertebra, each one of the bones, and you can see them running all the way down the back, right? And that's the central picture. And then the trapezius muscle traps. You hear weightlifters talk about their traps. Notice how, and remember, this is only, you only look at the left half, there's a right half too, and it goes up to the back of the neck and sticks to the back of the neck. So when it pulls, it pulls your head, makes your head go up and back, looking up, right? And it uh, goes also to your, uh, your, your, the, your arm, right? Right over your delts, right over there, that, to your arm, your, your 
uh, your blade, your back blade. Uh, very interesting. So these muscles, if you learn them and then you get somebody that you can touch and, and you learn what each muscle does and then have them do it, you can feel the muscle, you'll uh, become an expert in knowing what things are going on. It's one of the reasons why I got so interested in massage. And in the 70s, I became a certified neuromuscular therapist with Paul St. John, who used to teach. He used to be the trainer for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And uh, he came to Atlanta and gave like a series of five or six courses. I took them all. This is before massage therapy was a profession where you had to have a license and we just learned how to do it. And I, I just got so interested in these muscles because they cause a lot of problems related to TMD. And do, do dentists know about this? No, this is not part of our real thick part of our curriculum when we're learning in dental school. Uh, you know, we're exposed to these things, but very quickly, and that's it. It's not common, but it does happen that people have scalp pain or hair pain. They can't touch an area on the side, they can't brush their head. Uh, and what's happening is the skin is hypersensitive, okay? And we call this allodynia. In other words, allodynia can lead to the triggering of a pain response from stimuli which do not normally provoke pain. So normally combing your hair does not normally cause pain. But allodynia is when pain is caused by something that doesn't. Hyperesthesia, feeling too much. You touch it and the patient jerks away. You see this in, in dent a lot of TMD patients. They don't like you to touch them, get away. They pull away from you. They pull their shoulders together. They're in a defensive posture, right? And then there is the concept of neural convergence, which means that uh, things all over the body, the top of the head, and go straight into one door. And that one door creates the same response, even though it's coming from different places. Uh, convergence means to come to the same point. Neural means nerves. Um, and so you can get muscle pain causing nerve problems to the skin and having a great deal of sensitivity on that skin. In other words, having allodynia or hyperesthesia. Hyperesthesia, you touch it and they jump away. With allodynia, they can possibly do the hair combing, but it hurts. But hyperesthesia, oh my God, they're in lots and lots of pain. These are things that we do see with TMD patients.